Just a few weeks ago, we reported on how more than 100 civilians had been killed while protesting in Sudan. There were reports of rapes and other abuses as well. Now, there have been some political developments that might improve the situation there. And joining us now to break down what's been going on is journalist Ismail Kushkush. Ismail, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, very glad to have you here. So uh, I, I know that in America, the amount of political knowledge about what's happening in Sudan, either historically or currently, is obviously very low. So we appreciate your expertise. If you could get us uh, at least briefly uh, up to up to speed on what's been going on there, we'd appreciate it. Right. So a, an agreement was made between the opposition of Freedom and Change Forces and the uh, transitional military government um, last uh, Friday on how to establish a transitional government that would lead Sudan eventually uh, to democracy. But, but I mean, to go back uh, just a bit, I mean, for those who may um, not be familiar with the events in Sudan, you know, last December, large protests broke out against the rule of Omar al-Bashir, who had been in power for 30 years. Um, the, protests, the protests went up and down uh, until April 6, where there was a large sit-in in front of the Ministry of Defense. And, and that eventually led to some elements in the army to ouster the uh, president um, on April 11th. And for two months, between, um, there had been a um, dialogue between the opposition uh, forces and, and the government on how to transition, what kind of transition, um, what, what structure that, that transitional government would take place. Um, that sit-in uh, was um, attacked by um, the military on June the 3rd, uh, leading to the uh, killing of over 120, at least 128 people and the rape of at least 70. Um, and so for the past uh, month and a half, um, um, there have been debates on how to move forward. Uh, the internet was shut down, uh, which was just restored yesterday. Um, but uh, people, you know, are looking forward to you know this new agreement and uh, the, the hope to transition into a genuine democracy. So, uh, so I, I, I've read up on the agreement, and it has multiple different stages that eventually lead to democracy, at least in theory. Can you tell us uh, how that's going to proceed over the next few years? Right. So um, the first thing is is with the structure, and that has been you know the thorny issue uh, from the very beginning. Um, the agreement says that, uh, or lays out that the um, there will be a division of power between civilians and um, uh, military. Um, five civilians and five military with an 11th uh, civilian to be agreed upon between uh, both parties. Uh, the, the, there will be a rotating uh, leadership of the um, uh, Sovereignty Council uh, and the military will take over for the first 21 months. Um, to be followed by 18 months ruled by the civilians, and then that would lead to a, a um, elections and the establishment of a civilian government. So uh, I, I have to wonder, are there concerns about the initial period of, of close to two years, not quite two years, um, being led by the military, especially considering what's been going on recently, the killings and the rapes and all that, is there concern that uh, if power is given to the military for that period that they might be hesitant to give it up after the allotted period. That's the million dollar question, and that's where you know many people are concerned uh, with: Will the military be true to its word? Will it allow to for a transition um, to the uh, second part of this transitional period, where civilians would lead, and then eventually uh, to election? Um, given the history of the military in Sudan, given that. Many members, of, top members of the military, were either involved in the massacre of June 3rd or even were a part of Bashir's regime. Many are hesitant uh, to believe that the um, military will stay true to its word. Um, and uh, you know, there have been many parties involved in shaping this agreement. Uh, regional groups like the African Union, regional governments um, um, like Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia, and, and so forth. Uh, but many of the activists, uh, uh, I mean, this this has caused division I'm, I'm in the street. Um, some are against the agreement. Some say this is the best chance that we have at the moment. Um, so it's really a matter of uh, wait and see. And so what will you be looking for uh, over the next couple of years? What will be signs that, that might give you hope? What will be warning signs that you're gonna be on the watch for as, as we proceed through these stages? 
Right. I mean, so the first thing is in the establishment of the uh, legislative council or the government, the government is supposed to be a government of technocrats, um, how that government is established, um, who are the major figures in this government, I think will be the first thing uh, to look at. Um, I think as far as uh, grassroots activism, um, whether activists will um, maintain organizing on the ground, um, may, um, pushing for uh, key issues. What what may what has made this uprising different from past uprisings in Sudan or even in in the region? I mean, the idea that uh, activists had rejected uh, immediate elections tells you something of the depth. Um, of thinking, uh, because you know, it, you know, democracy is not simply about elections; it's about establishing institutions. And this is why activists wanted a longer period of transition. Mm -hmm. So I think if activists still, you know, push for the um, um, uh, spreading consciousness, um, the um, looking out for how institutions will be established, I think that's going to be a major factor. And then also to look at uh, what the military and what regional powers that support uh, the military, um, what actions that, that they might take, um, whether it might um, go back on its words or, or, or so. I think that those are the three things, the things that we need to look at. Well, Ismail Kushush, we appreciate you joining us and uh, explaining the situation in Sudan currently. We would love to, to check in with you uh, as the political and, uh, and perhaps military situation develops in the country in the future. Absolutely, thank you for having me. Thank you for watching this clip from The Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's. TYT.com slash John. Go to TYT.com slash John to sign up.